The old Wethersfield Historic District in Wethersfield, Connecticut has a lot of great attractions, especially for those with an interest in American history. Within a short distance, visitors can explore several historic house museums, a picturesque old burying ground, and an expansive New England green. There's also plenty of shopping and restaurants. You can definitely spend a full day visiting the Webb Dean Stevens Museum, the Budoff Williams House, the Hurlbut Dunham House, and the Keeney Memorial Cultural Center. But Old Wethersfield is also the largest historic district in the state of Connecticut. There are over 150 houses built before 1850. So if you head out north or south along Main Street from the central area, you'll pass by numerous great historic houses and other buildings. Some have been converted for businesses and others remain private homes. This is History with me, Dan, and in this video, I'm going to talk about some of the historic buildings that are on Main Street in Old Wethersfield, just south of the area where the main historic attractions are concentrated. Our first building is on the east side of Main Street, just south of the Keeney Memorial Cultural Center. The Greek Revival style really proliferated in the second quarter of the 19th century, and the Chester Bulkley House in Wethersfield is a classic example of this style. It has a triangular pediment facing the street and an off-center front doorway which is frequently found in Connecticut examples of the style. But what's less typical here is that the house is built of brick instead of the more typical wood. The Chester Bulkley House was built in 1830 and today is a bed and breakfast. A little further down Main Street is another brick building built about three decades earlier, 1801 to 1804. It was built in the Federal style, which preceded the Greek Revival as a popular style, and like the Greek Revival, was also inspired by classical architecture. The front of the building is very symmetrical, and above the front door is a semicircular window, which was typical of the Federal style. Called the Old Academy, this building was built by the town's first school society and from 1824 to 1833 served as a female seminary or school for girls run by Reverend Joseph Emerson. In later years, it was used for a time as Wethersfield's town hall and library, and it now houses the offices and research collections of the Wethersfield Historical Society. Moving a little further south down the street, our next building brings us to the end of the 19th century. This structure was built in 1878 as a Grange Hall. Local chapters of the National Grange Organization hosted social activities in farming communities. So this building really recalls the days when Wethersfield was primarily an agricultural community. This building reflects the influence of the shingle style and is a late Victorian contrast to the many colonial and early 19th century buildings in Wethersfield's historic district. Next door to the former Grange Hall is a building that was erected originally in 1824 as a Methodist Episcopal Church. It was moved 26 feet onto a new stone foundation in 1882. It continued as a church until the congregation moved to a new building on Prospect Street in 1959. In 1961, the building was dedicated as a synagogue, Temple Beth Torah, the building's steeple was removed and a new colonial revival style entrance reflecting classic Connecticut River Valley style doorways was added. Right next door is a house built around 1770 by Samuel Talcott. 
In the mid-19th century, it was owned by Captain George Latimer. In 1863, he drowned while attempting to free his boat that had run aground in the Connecticut River. To the south, Main Street intersects with Garden Street. At the southeast corner of Main and Garden is a building erected in 1800. It is another brick house, and in this case, it's an example of one of a number of brick houses in the Wethersfield area, constructed by the master builder, Captain James Francis. This house was originally the home of Richard Bunce, and it also served as a tavern, with the tavern entrance being at the rear of the building, on the Main Street side. I want to mention two buildings that are just a little bit further to the east, along Garden Street. One is the former Sacred Heart Church, which was dedicated in 1881. This was the first Catholic church building in Wethersfield. The current Sacred Heart Church was dedicated on Hartford Avenue in 1963. For a time, this building was used by John Oldham Studios, a company that creates displays for trade shows. The Queen Anne style house, just east of the church, was built in 1900 and originally served as the parish rectory. Also on Garden Street is a house that once stood around the corner on Broad Street. Originally, it was the northern half of the John Chester Tavern, built in 1735. Chester's grandchildren later detached this part of the building and moved it to Garden Street. Returning to Main Street, on the west side, north of Garden Street, are several houses associated with the Wright family. Josiah Wright built the house on the corner in the 1760s. In 1799, the house was altered and modernized by his son, Simon Wright, who raised the roof and also added, in keeping with the federal style, semicircular windows above the entrances and in the gable end facing Garden Street. Just a little further north is a blue house built in 1791 as a home for Simon's brother, David Wright. And just north of that is a red house built in 1766 that later became the home of another brother, Captain Ashbell Wright, who served in the Revolutionary War at Lexington and Bunker Hill. This was also later the house from 1824 to 1833 of Reverend Joseph Emerson, who I mentioned earlier ran the female seminary that was located in the old academy. Next door is a small house built in 1740 that originally stood nearer to the meeting house of the First Church of Christ. Called the John Loveland House, it may originally have been what was referred to as a Sabbath house. These were structures erected in colonial New England near meeting houses. They were used by families that had traveled long distances to attend services and could not go home easily for a break to eat and rest between the lengthy sermons. The last building I'm going to mention was built around 1790 by Elijah Wright and would have resembled the other Wright houses nearby on Main Street. But around 1850, the house was elaborately remodeled in the Italianate style with decorative features that include brackets along the roof line. The remodeling was likely done by Silas W. Robbins, a seed company owner, and by 1869, the house was owned by his brother, Edward Griswold Robbins. Today, the building is a popular restaurant called The Charles. If you want to continue this tour further north up Main Street, check out my video on the central area of the Old Wethersfield Historic District near the intersection of Main, Marsh, and Church Streets. 
and thanks for watching.